Hello. Hello, everyone. Aradhna Tiwari here, founder of Be the Change Page, an access consciousness certified facilitator, empowering and intuitive business coach, and your friend to take today's um, talk show with my friend. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, just to brief you about what the Be The Change talk show is and what the Be The Change page is. Be The Change page is basically here. Um, this is a page to empower you that you know you are your own master, your own gurus and your own uh, creators of your life. So here I post every morning a question which I come and talk about on 11.11 every morning and on Instagram at 11.11 a.m. So why I kept 11.11 a.m. is just because it is easy to remember. There is no significance to that. And um, yeah, so the whole question basically is just to, uh, for you to introspect in your world and look to ask that question or have that play in your world to go through it and see what it brings up for you because everything lies within you. The universe is within you, it's not outside you. This just is a space where it invites everybody to be that change that they truly are in the world for and not trying to be like some like others. And this talk show is basically inspired by my childhood where I used to follow everybody who I used to see that, you know, in spite of their situations and problems and stuff, uh, what they had to go through, they could still come out of, out of it and create some difference. And I'm like, how did they create that difference? And for me, everybody who had that courage to create that difference and not to give up are, uh, are celebrities. So for me, every Sunday, whosoever I invite is a celebrity for me. And I totally adore them, totally acknowledge the courage that they have. And today also I have a very amazing guest uh, these are very close friends of mine, Ina Basu and Adrish Chakravarti. And we are pleased to share with you that our guests for today's episode, Ina Basu and Adrish Chakravarti, she, um, uh, she had a communication, Ina had a communication design company and he had an architecture firm and other partners. When they met, th things began to change. When they met, things um, they birthed together the earth, home, and exploration of what's possible with design, spaces, architecture, and living on the whole when one begins to choose and create in communion with beautiful planet we call the home, the earth. We do like to like a good turn on bodies, whether that might be spaces or furniture or simple graphic design. Our desire is to create each space, beauty, and exuberance of living, says Ina and Azrish. Join me as I chat with them about the excitement and creation. So... Can I have Ina and Nazrish? Can I have you guys online? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. And the crowd goes crazy. Yay. <laughs> Paparazzi <laughs> moment. <laughs> celebrity moment. I'm having my celebrity moment. My two celebrity <laughs> And how did I get so lucky? Thank you for saying yes for this. And um, yes. I Thank you. I'm so lucky to have you guys here. Uh, and, and I just said, as I just said that for me, each one of you showing up here, being invited is a celebrity and I do mean it. And um, so this is like a behind the camera scene moments for me to, uh, for you to share because this is what people see you. But I want to know the real life story of yours. How did you create it? Uh, what does the earth home means to you? And before I start, I would really like both of you to go a little bit on your own personal journeys and how you met and how this earth home birthed in the world. So I'll start with uh, let's let's not be uh, regular starting with the woman. Let's start with Adrish to set this time. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> let's be different. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh, you know, I I studied architecture in uh, in school, architecture school, and then I started uh, with a couple of my friends. I mean, we had no background. We had no. Uh, you know, we were just rookies. We didn't have any contacts. We, we were just hostlers who wanted to hustle on the architecture front. And we just had a very keen desire to create something really different, really nice, you know. So that's where we started as hustlers in the architecture field. I, of course, worked with for a couple of years under very senior architects and, you know, learned a lot from them. Again, you know, how to both, you know, in terms of the technical parts and all that and and how to kind of get a business going to some extent. That was, I'd say, all my, all my education that I have. In my four generations from my mom's side and from my dad's side, everybody's been into business. And uh, I was really at a loss as to how, you know, one does business. You were the first person who started the business in the entire family? 
in the entire family. Yes, four generations from my dad's side, mom's side, that had more. Nobody ever had a business. Wow, that's superb. That that's really courageous, Adrish. I must say. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I started, my parents were quite skeptical actually, and they were like, uh, you know, I, you should have a job on the side and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, I mean, either you go into this full fledged or you. So, and I was 24 or 25 at that point of time. And I was, I just looked at myself one day in the mirror and I was like, okay, I have nothing to lose. Wow. <laughs> what do I lose if I start off on my own? Wow. So that's how it started. And uh, I then, you know, from, from uh, almost, I would say scratch, we were three partners at that point of time. And we started a firm from our drawing room and in a span of uh, a decade, we took that firm from almost nothing to uh, we got internationally published right from uh, our projects got published right from uh, New York all the way to Hong Kong. Wow. All the countries in between. And I mean, we've been published. I really would like to know more around the decade period because that's what people don't see that you did pay your decade and you know how you, I mean, was it out of fun or out of joy? Of course. We call it a struggle at times and you know i'm sure it's not the struggle but the joy of reaching that top probably must have i mean i'm presuming that it just took you yeah that absolutely that decade was like unbelievable because you know i mean the, the first year year and a half we were like running around getting our own afos and you know cleaning the room and this and that whatever is required you know whatever it takes a client is coming we're ordering pizza you know i mean all that stuff is going on and then, you know, I mean, uh, one of us guys, uh, you know, was working. So there was some money coming in and then we'd, for a first payment, we had to wait for seven months after working. So our first payment came seven months. And for those seven months, we were sustaining on one salary of one guy. It was, so it was bizarre. So, wow. but anyways, you know, so, so, but we had, I mean, our point of view is we have nothing to lose. And we had this amazing, I mean, at least I had this like this, you know, amazingly big, you know, vision or whatever you call it, that, that you know, this is what it is in my, I'm going to create that in my life and, and as a business and as, as a, you know, as, as whatever my creations are going to be in the world, it's going to be like that. Did you ever, did you ever perceive at that point of you, uh, point of time, sorry, that you would be here where you are today? Oh, Never. I, I, I mean, it's beyond, uh, you know, from where I started and from where I'm coming from, uh, you know, my dad, like he was a very, uh, you know, honest uh, government official, you know, one of those very, uh, you know, ethical, honest kind of, you know, and, and we've been, you know, brought up like that, that, you know, I mean, this is how, and, and you never waver and look at stuff and all that. And and from that kind of an upbringing to kind of, you know, I, it was beyond, uh, uh, you know, uh, of course, India also developed as we grew. So, but it was beyond our, uh, you know, even scheme of things. I mean, I, I look at sometimes when I was in college, which is about, I think, 98, uh, 2000, I suppose, in 2000, I was in college. And I look back and I remember some of the conversations of, you know, uh, uh, friends would have as to what is the salary that would be, you know, good considering we're working somewhere. And uh, it's bizarre. I mean, what we had then, what we perceived at that point of time and what life is right now is absolutely unbelievable. So, so what would you have to say in one line if you really, really have to say that, you know, um, like how to hold yourself at that point of time when you're really, really working hard? Because yeah. you, you never know what comes out. Like it's how... You copulate and you do not know after nine months you have a beautiful baby in your hand. So I guess you you kind of work that way. You work then and it's the baby is right now in your hands. So what would you like to say to the people like who are listening and who are the just the startups? Um, I, I I would say that you know one thing that uh, one thing that you know so so this form I I just retract back a little bit. I'd say that you know so we reached sort of a place of glory okay and where you know if if i do walk into a, a sort of a you know so everybody came to know of us at that particular because there's a lot of media hype going on you know everybody was publishing us like right and center and all that and what i realized at that point of time was that you know uh, a lot of this is inflated so we really require to look at 
what exactly do we require to create now? So 10 years have gone, you know, so, you know, there was something that I wanted to create and some kind of a version of that got created, but is this what I'm looking at creating right now? So that was an important junction where Tina and I kind of, so I had met Tina in 2007 and then, you know, we got together in 2008. <laughs> And then, you know, our conversations just went to a completely different level. And, you know, I mean, our, you know, the, the way we felt about the earth or, you know, the, the way the, you know, the, those conversations were just starting about the climate and environment. I, in fact, uh, uh, the first office that I worked in right after college was an office which practiced climate, climate responsive architecture. One of the pioneers of climate responsive architecture in India, uh, Professor Arvind Krishan. I worked under him. He was the HOD of School of Planning and Architecture at the point of time. And he's one of the guys who's like a pioneer, he's written books, you know, and everybody knows him in this, uh, you know, place of uh, sustainable architecture in India today. And I've been very lucky to have worked under him. And everything that I've picked up, at least from that point, it started my journey towards looking at Earth in a very different way. I mean, we all have a sense of, you know, uh, connection, which, uh, I mean, Ina is very good at that as well. In, you know, yeah. I think we come more into deep conversations with you to let have Ina start her journey and come to 2007 with you and then probably we'll take forward from sure. there. <laughs> yeah, Ina, can we hear your aspect? I'm wondering where to start, like how back do I go? Wherever, whatever you think would contribute to here on this platform. So one of the things that I wanted to add, like with what Audrish was talking about, um, and when you asked us to talk, like give your bio for this for this talk, we were like, what is it we would really like to talk about and we were looking at what you, what you were inviting us to as well. And it, it's really this, uh, you know, we'd created an office space with, um, with, um, with other partners and we were looking at creating a collaborative space and we created a whole like nice 3,500, 4,000 square feet uh, office. But it was like an exploration space for Audrish and me. Like when Audrish and me met, Audrish used to keep saying, you know, there's something that I get that we've got to create together and that we can create together. And I used to keep wondering like, okay, I wonder what that would be, getting married, okay, <laughs> let's give that a shot. What is he talking about? Um, but I'm not even saying that we're there yet, but we didn't really know what that was. Still, we started looking at, we had our separate businesses and we were creating our own things. and. And we looked at this and when we started creating that space, we started exploring possibilities that we hadn't before. Like Audrey was doing architecture, I was doing like in, you know, print media was big at that time. It, online wasn't that much when I was doing the communication design. And I used to always question like so much we are printing, like what's required? Like what is really going to contribute to a different future with the planet? And, um, and when we started off that place, was 90% or more, I think, Audrey, right? Yeah. Like 90% or more reclaimed, recycled, and reused. Wow. And, you know, we used to always look at the reclaim and recycle stuff and used to find it very arty, like very like lower sort of uh, thing. And we were like, how can we create something that actually will match the kind of standards that we would like to have or like the quality that we would like to have as well as explore the possibilities of the beauty that we would like to have and create space that actually, so it was like an experiment and I won't say that's the answer. I'm not saying that that's the answer of getting, uh, you know, re only using recycled, reclaim and reuse. However, that whole expo exploration started uh, getting Audrey and me excited about a different possibility and asking different questions about, hey, what is it that we would like to create? And the more we asked that, the more we realized that, oh, we're heading in a different direction then what his current architecture firm and partners were choosing. So when we started moving that, uh, moving towards that, we had created this office, spent lakhs and lakhs of rupees in building this office space because we went all out and designed it and worked on it. And you know, when you're starting working on your own project, you're like, oh, you know, we'll see it, let's do that. Of course, the business expanded because then we had to generate and create more. Uh, however, the we spend so much money on it. So like, it took us a bit of time between, uh, between what we were choosing then and to really take the jump and leap and go like between me when we got the awareness and when we actually left. Or maybe we chose it then and then it took a bit of time to the transformation. 
yeah so you both like to kind of choose so you both have been talking about that you had the awareness and you had the question that what would it create to create with earth and you know recycling so you know is that just a point of view what is it is that recycling required what i mean can we talk a little more yeah. around how is that yes. actually contributing with the climate with the recycling with everything how is that a uh, concept and how is that helping the uh, earth and how is that related to our lives day to day lives and how is that kind of contributive in i would life? yeah it's it's actually cool i just wanted to say that so when we move we spend so much of money and time and effort in creating that space but when we when by the time we created it we had to take that choice like either we stick to you know talking about how we make these choices if we had stayed there it would have created a different future and then we looked at okay are we willing to lose this are we willing to lose this the business like what we just talking about the publicity and how it the, the business brand is like creating itself and the and the money that we put in the time that we put into that or we actually head towards something that will change the trajectory to a different place and we might have to lose a few things and that choice that choice of going no here we are going this way was the first step towards moving towards that will create more that you, creates more. The, you, you just went with the lightness and the awareness of it and just, yeah not going like you know how many people told us we are so stupid we've just spent so many lakhs of rupees on our office and now we are leaving it and how we should you know uh, find ways but i think between our awareness and when it showed up it was a realization of like oh this is not going to go in that direction okay so then what are the direction and that's when it was a choice that audrey and i had to make where uh it was a bit of a hitch because i remember all these was like i have this established business don't ask me to leave it <laughs> yeah and i was like i was like okay let's not leave it but hey what else can we create so i started creating it like as as a furniture business but then when audrey was like okay i'm done I'm, i'm ready it was that it was that support system and the willingness to go okay we are here now what let's start in the drawing room audrey had already started in his drawing room like he mentioned like on on one friend space this is the second startup again okay, a startup in the drawing room yeah. after establishing something and creating something and you know taking it all over there is like okay let's start it but it only <laughs> feels like it's an it's you starting a new but it's not because you've already actually created so may i uh, if i may ask were you both willing to fail also maybe that this decision totally would have left you nowhere was it was it like okay by you both yeah yeah that's how we went i mean that's why we went from like like leaving that office space and going I is that what you were asking i see i see ina going very easy with that but i don't so i don't see adrish going easy with that so what uh, is that adrish so for me uh, willingness to fail was that you know i uh, i somehow have this point of view i'll never fail mm-hmm. and and i'm willing to lose because i if i was not willing to lose i wouldn't have been able to lose what i've created for the last 10 years i mean i the earlier form was named by me nurtured by me created by me you know of course my partners were there yeah but you know after getting into that level and realizing that oh this is i've created this for the last 10 years and 12 years and and you know but i looked at the future and i saw that okay it's going to be another 30 years i cannot be you know and i was getting a little unhappy there because the kind of stuff that i was looking at creating i was not able to create because you know, there were other stuff going on there which other kind of dynamics and stuff like that which was not allowing me to be you know fully doing what i know can be done mm-hmm. and uh, so so i was looked at the future and, and it took me a bit you know it took i gathered a lot of courage it took me a little bit of a while to kind of gather that up but then uh, uh, i took the jump and again <laughs> and uh, what i what i what i know is that i i will not fail i mean whatever and given i, I it's not that we haven't failed we have failed in a couple of places we tried new things and we failed miserably like really really bad to the level where you know i mean i had this point of view that i cannot receive judgment everybody said must say he is a very good architect he is a very good designer he is a very good you know handles money really well and when you define that uh, failure i mean for us that what does that was it actually a failure now coming forward there or was it that you learned something from it and what is a failure for you guys like what do you say failure is so it what what i saw was that so that that period was for about 
a year, year and a half where, you know, we, we really had to kind of relook at a lot of stuff. But I would say that it was like a six year PhD that we got in one and a half years. Yeah. I mean, the amount of awarenesses that we got post that and the kind of choices. I mean, it was such a tremendous learning experience, you know, I mean, um, not willing to be judged, you know, we were, I was not willing to be judged before that. And, uh, uh, you know, when, when we failed some visibility and, you know, I mean, after creating that kind of, uh, you know, from that kind of pedestal that, you know, some, we tried something completely new. We never did it before. It's and, funny that you're making me uh, uh, feel that, you know, failures accelerate the um, success. This is amazing. Failures really accelerate the success, right? Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's not that if somebody has to fail to succeed. Yeah, but, but it, yeah. But, but it, yeah, it's like not getting scared of it because if you end up turning into it, which is not a failure, it's acceleration to your business, right? Is it? Or is say it? that if you haven't failed, that means you haven't tried enough. If you haven't failed, you haven't tried enough things. Because if you if you were if you were trying enough things, I mean, you'll fail in something. So I guess that you've got to look at what is working and like how the car is on the road, it will get hit someday, somewhere, some a little or more. Depends. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. That is amazing. And so how does this earth homes and how does this all help in uh, climate control and how does it help in uh, yeah, I would ask that question also before that. So uh, we'll take you up on that. You know, I'm just going to take this one. Yep. So, so, you know, the, the, uh, there are two kinds of things in that. One is that uh, when we look at our building, so, you know, incidentally, we do a lot of homes and, you know, luxury homes, homes, educational buildings, different kinds of stuff. Uh, but what is common in all of them is that you require to design the build shell, which is the building form. And, uh, you know, for us, the, the sun is actually moving around the earth and not the earth moving around the sun because as an architect and you know as Ina and I as designers when we go to the land we sit on the land and we can actually see the sun moving around the land so the build for the building the building does not have to have the point of view that I'm moving around the sun so when we look at the sun the sun is in constant movement throughout the year whether it's low it goes up you know it's very low in winters it goes up in summers and then it grazes the southern side and moves, rises from the east, sets in the west, that's in the northern hemisphere, of course, in the south, it's going to be different. And, um, you know, the way we design is that uh, there are two aspects to that. One is, one is asking the land, Ina is really, you know, you know, asking and, you know, uh, getting the awareness of, okay, where do you require to place the building and, you know, all that. Second part that we look at is that, that okay, if we were to build the build shell and we require to look at uh, how the sun movement can be traced and how can we design our building and the skin in such a way that in summers, you know, you're keeping off, keeping out the sun, you know, critical in the critical areas, but you're letting the sun in, like the toilets and all, you'd like the sun to come into pressure. But in the bedrooms, you know, where you're sleeping and stuff like that, it's not, uh, uh, you know, it'll make it very hot. And uh, uh, so we are trying to see and, and the same places, the same bedroom in the winters, you, you know, you should get the sun coming all the way right, all the way to the inside of the room. So we actually can modulate and design and then also through technology and softwares and, you know, all these kind of actually get real time assessment of the building shadows throughout the year. And then we can assess and uh, through again, uh, you know, scientific tools, we can look at how much uh, energy saving can be done on the building. By energy saving, we mean like say, how much is the air conditioning? Air conditioning is to be one of the main, uh, you know, it takes a lot of energy. So uh, in terms of air conditioning, we've saved uh, anywhere between buildings, anywhere between 60% to 74% of energy requirement of a building throughout a year. And that is through simulations. We have graphs, we have, you know, we scientifically done it and it's you know against a against a test experiment so so it's 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 you know i mean and also the building doesn't look like it's a environmentally friendly building it, it, the building looks like you know it's a it's a it, it's a very nicely designed building and you know and and we've done third party audits and one of the buildings we just finished uh, uh, our third party audit uh, gave us this thing that we've saved 7 lakh rupees 
a year on wow. the cost on a 25000 square feet building so is it that adrish if i may ask that is it that something new because i recently uh, visited um, my hometown where i actually ended up which is living in a house which is like um, built way way in 80s or you know much before i think in 40s 1930s or 40s and the house made there had the walls made there is so like i did it was a tweak heat and i did not require an air conditioner yeah, yeah and i was feeling cold and i'm like which air conditioner is on and i'm like none of the air conditioners were on and the walls were made so beautifully and then and at the same time when it comes winter mm -hmm. the houses are so warm yeah is it that it already was there and then it's been totally yes. taken off from the space and now we, we are our you know architects are adding that to a new so the way it was was that traditionally through you know so design when it evolved traditionally so you know people tried out different things and traditional design automatically is climate responsive so if you look at kerala homes they will have open beam balconies you know and they'll have cross ventilation so that they, because the humidity is high they want the sea breeze to flow through and through whereas if you look at some houses in jaipur and you know they'll have these havelis which are contained with courtyards so traditionally you know architecture always had that but what happened is in modern last 40 to 50 years you know just because everybody wanted to create you know new stuff and you know bring the old and this and that it completely let go of all that knowledge and all that science you know it's like you have a forest and you have say a herd of elephants there and the elephants give the information of the forest from generation to generation to generation to generation right and so that's a mother elephant or the matriarch would know where exactly to take the herd in the forest to give it to so that is the kind of information that was flowing in human civilization you know or whatever civilization and what happened in the last 40 50 100 years you know that complete chain got broken after the industrial revolution and uh, this whole thing of the machine age came into being and you know even in architecture there was a movement where the building was looked at as a machine and a lot of people uh, you know i mean even corbusier and all these architects were part of creating that and in that process what they did was they completely lost the entire knowledge and the information they had before that and completely yeah. lost yeah, so sorry, sorry to cut you there. Just wanted to ask a question because I know you both are from the access background as well, where you have been also, you know, figuring out the spiritual or the um, more conscious, uh, you know, I won't say spiritual, I'd say more conscious uh, aspect of it. So right. what, do you, what do you know is what was the reason that, you know, all this whole consciousness went away and is that something to related to the consciousness also that people just wanted only not because of the industrial or making something new or was it also attached to somebody's internal frustrations or internal show off or uh, do you think anything has related to that with doing of what it was earlier and now and then now again regaining back so my awareness of that is that uh, you know if you look at the population graph of the planet so uh, when I was born, I was born in 1980, there were 3.8 billion people at that point of time on the planet. In 1800, they were like less than one third of that, way, way less than that, way less than that. And in the last 40 years, we've added 3.8 billion more people. So number one, to support this kind of people on the planet, the kind of materials, that's why you have plywood with it. So the kind of materials that were required to support this kind of a population had to go down. The material quality had to, everything had to go down. Everything had to become cheap. And factories and industries came in. And when factories and industries came in, they wanted to make money as well, right? So they would use the cheapest of materials. That's why industrial designers, if you look at it, there's a thing called industrial design, in which you find out the best way to use the material, which is great. You know? I mean, you're looking at the best way to use a material and how to make it the best and how you're going to sell it to the public and how to design it, which is fantastic. However, what that does is that it takes people away from the actual part of it because they're getting, you know, seduced by the design of it. Whereas if you look at the actual intrinsic quality of that whole material and that whole product, it's actually, there's nothing in it. And, and this kind of a thought process, World War II was a huge uh, reason why this happened as well, because World War II actually ply and plastics and all these things developed in World War II. And they realized that they don't have enough resources to supplement, supplement the world. So, you know, now those technologies came and thrived and, 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 you know, to support the baby boomers and, you know, I mean, the population was growing. 
so the world adapted to that i mean it was good in a way because otherwise if everybody had solid wooden furniture there would have been any, wouldn't have been any rain forests today so in a way to support the population the quality went down but even then the amount of resources we are pulling out today from the earth uh it's uh, i mean if you know about the earth day the earth day is a day when uh, you know uh, the earth regenerates say 100 and we are consuming 100 by the half by june so actually we are consuming double and uh, very strangely you know everybody asks at this point of view that you know it's a birthright to Uh, and and it's a fundamental right for a country to get developed you know everybody i mean i face this from students a lot that you know we require to be developed that's a fundamental right every government would say we require to be developed and if you look at developed countries like the us consumes five times the resources that the us can generate and the whole country can generate as a landmass and europe generates european lifestyle or level of development of europe consumes three times the amount so if any of us if india was to become the whole world was to become like europe or america you know we would be using five times the resources or four, three times the resources that the earth can generate is that sustainable is that in any way possible i mean we are blind here <laughs> so what is the way forward i know it's just like a lot of uh, not getting into the nitty gritty of it but i would really like if you guys to know so what is it that earth calls for it and what does how do you say the earth is actually how is it related to our bodies how to our lives and how is this what can every single person be to kind of you know come to a sustainable earth How, how, what is the possibility here? Of course, you building those houses, kind of houses, and I know people who are building their new houses. If we actually conserve the energies and actually, like how you said, you save seven lakh per month for yeah. that oh, yeah. year for a person, and that's amazing. So what? Uh, so what are the way forward, and what what do you think that people require to do and be, and what is the need of the hour? Like, what is required here? I guess first, you know, I mean. get connected to the earth i mean we are not connected to the earth that's one of the first things you know that's why ina and i when we have the discussion we named our company the earth home the earth is our home you know uh, i mean today elon musk is planning to go to the moon to the to mars and find a different distance i mean you know instead of using our resources to do random things we should be actually looking at how we can you know okay all of us are you know managed to breed and become 7.8 billion people today so okay now how do we you know live with the earth in a in a, on on those terms where you know there's mutual respect for the earth we look at the sun we look at the moon we look at how things how the wind is flowing you know and and you know with that connection you, the moment you create from that connection also a, a huge respect for flora and fauna i mean the, the what i see is that you know architecture and development is almost almost anti flora it 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 almost seems like that you have to cut down trees and you have to destroy the land you have to destroy all these spirits land spirits destroy the spirit of the land to be able to build but that's not true at all that's not true in fact i mean we planted more than 5000 trees in our projects I mean, there is a time when it looks like you know that things are, but that also doesn't require to look like that. When you're digging, when you're doing certain things, also how the architecture can flow, you know, how the how the like Ina is a big proponent of that. That you keep the land free, and you build the building slightly higher, so the land, you know, the water is flowing, and you know the critters don't die. And you know, I mean, wildlife. I I see that you know when we build. uh as 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 humans when we build you know the entire wildlife is there even even birds but it's not necessary because without i was just reading an article of jane uh, the, the gorilla uh, lady jane goodall i think some guy and she was saying that you know i mean every every uh, uh, species is like a thread in a tapestry and they all all of them are actually playing a very important role and you know we are taking one of them out so you know we get to hear things from people like you know oh i don't want lizards oh i don't want 
birds to come in. Oh, I don't want trees because you know this will happen, that will happen. But actually, if you are taking out these you know threads out, I mean that is where you require to look at you know how you know like the lizard would eat the insects, and the insects you know are important in some other way. And so they are all coming together you know in some way. And one of the movies, great, great, great movies that we saw was the the Little Big Farm. You know what was it? Where you know Little Big, um, Littlest Big, uh, littlest, biggest, littlest, biggest, big biggest small farm. farm or something like that. You know, and they were wow. talking, and and it's about a couple's journey, and they try to do organic farming and stuff like that in two hundred acres of land. And that's where you see how the systems of nature actually. What we are trying to do is we are trying to control, and what we require to let go of is control. And we require to allow nature and be a part of it. Allow nature to do its own, and we require to be a part of that whole ecosystem. And what is your take on that, Ina, for uh, nature and how when you're doing your furniture and you know you're designing that furniture, how's that? How are you keeping that earth into aspect? One of the things is that, you know, what it's like. It's interesting because the more you ask, like you said, because where we stick ourselves is where we go to the answer of it like yeah. where we go into answer of like you know go green and then you'll have everyone talk about going green but it's not good it has nothing to do with what's actually going to contribute to the earth so it's it's a regular everyday ask of what can we choose like like from what my job i've taken on is to ask with every project i'm like okay so with the land like what do you require what do you desire? No. And if you sense that by me just asking that, it gives it this energy show that, right? Yeah. So what is it that you require? What is it that you desire? And the land will give you the information because it has no point of view. So and then it's the willingness to ask, how can I how can we create you create with you in a way that actually includes everything and everyone? And then it's interesting. The more you ask that question, the more those things start showing up. Like you'll pick up a certain vase, or you'll pick up a certain thing that'll actually contribute to more of that. So it's not, it's not linear and logical. However, the willingness to actually be in that question and the willingness to receive the awareness and the willingness to know that you're just receiving and acknowledging it makes it expand. And how do you? Is a possibility you, that? Yeah, sorry. How do you add the um, feng shui or vastu and all things to this where you're asking questions to versus? Bang Shui and you know the we, land, asking the land and uh, honoring the land. So could you talk a bit about that, Ina? Along I I actually don't because yeah. I find that that's an answer too. But mm -hmm. we, but lot, like a lot of people who come come to us to, for their homes are interested in uh, Vastu in India. So mm -hmm. we include that as an awareness, but we don't exclude our awareness based on that. So we say okay, the the room requires to be in this space as per what the requirement of the people are. So how can we make it in a way that actually is a contribution? So this constant, uh, this, it's a constant question and a constant the willingness to receive the awareness of what will work. Like we recently were working on a house and I was like, okay, Lani, show me where do you want the water? Very clearly when you ask that, like if I ask you, like tap into the land, to that land, that I'm talking about and ask it, where would it like to have the water, like the pool? And that will contribute to it the most. Yeah. And it gives it you an awareness. It's necessarily where Bastu is asking you to do huh? No. It but it's necessarily where Bastu is asking you to do Right. That, that you can always work around. So if you actually look in this, it gives you the information, right? So this and it's like we're far more energetic than we actually uh, allow ourselves to acknowledge. But the more you're willing to ask for it, strengthening a muscle, the more that information, like anyone who's like listening to as well, like if you look at your home, there's something that if you have a water problem or if there's something going on, you want to ask, okay, what is required here that will shift this? Where would the water like to go? Okay, what are, can you go from another direction that actually works? So you're not excluding, there's no judgment in, in, involved that oh, if someone is building a fancy house, uh, like let's judge them. Uh, 
but there is no particular answer but it's the willingness to be present with each each project each situation each body that we are that will be using that space from now and into the future and being in the question and then it doesn't you can't go into your head but energetically it presents you friends presents you with different options and yeah. then you go okay now how can we build this in a way that will actually be a contribution so if you're dem- like our the, the demand that we have of ourselves is to actually and a lot of times clients don't know that this is occurring because they can't receive this information but but the people who are listening to this conversation might be able to so we can have this conversation here so uh, so thank you actually for inviting us but the willingness to really the willingness to ask and the willingness to seek the earth is no point we'll give you the information as much as you want like um so i was just saying what was i saying so the so things will start popping and showing up so our demand is how can we started with demanding like after what, what i was talking about like when we started that office space we realized after building that the answer is not necess- it we can't limit ourselves to the answer of reclaim recycle and reuse because that is a utopian idea what is actually required is to go okay what can we create this is the situation this is what is showing up this is what currently people are choosing in india this is what currently our clients are choosing okay what is possible what can we choose here so a lot of times you tend you have a tendency to go into oh yahan to aisa hi hai market is like this people are like this so you know you build on top on top on top but yes there is an awareness there but you can still ask a question of okay so what can we instill here that will create a different future so so from after building that what we started asking was how can we build without with the least amount of damage to the earth yeah you know it was not even in our awareness at that point that like this was few years back right five years four years five years six years back it was not an awareness that we could today that we ask is it's a very different space like if you look at the energy of like 6 years back what we were the question that we could ask and the question that we can ask and receive now is very different so now we can actually ask okay or you show us what would you like to create with us so my question and, is when you sorry when you've created these houses with these questions what has been the response of the people living in that house has have, have you been uh, responded that how people are feeling is there a different life they're living are they more joyful are they more connected to earth do you sense that ever with your clients or have you never had the feedback no we are constantly yeah, with our with our with our clients you know i, I mean, mean in the, in in contrast to the like how i know i'm sure i didn't mean that you're not in contact yeah. about around this whole journey of asking a question and living and seeing how you know when you live from that question and that space is that space actually creating greater for people in that they living? have been more joyful i've seen them they don't know what it wouldn't have been exactly. otherwise but they know what their life has transformed from where they were living before and to yeah. where they are now so for them they also get that maybe it's because this their new project is that and all that but i you know when you see that the the kind of space and the amount of joy and the like the you know uh, i would say the possibilities that it created like we shifted one joint family it was a, a six people six not people six family joint family wow we extended to seven or eight with a little bit of extensions and we we, ex- we put the joint family from a single building so they had they were staying in a single building onto a farm and we gave them their entire each spaces you know and we created you know individual spaces and all that and without and cutting any trees without yeah. cutting, without cutting trees and adding and planting some 450 500 we, we planted about no we planted about a good 1000 trees in that setup uh, oh did we have the wrong number yeah and uh, uh, you know so so what what transformed was you know the level of they number one their life changed wow and and then what happened was that you know each family the you know the the, the family unit the wives the children they started getting their own space and you know the way it all they had the space but they were still connected it was a business you know family business so they had to you know be with each other so a lot of family dynamics going on there but it allowed all of them 
breathed, you know, after shitting. Yeah. It felt like for the yes, first time. Breathing. I'm so excited to go and watch. See that drop. Uh, <laughs> it creates, uh, <laughs> sure, it's, it creates, it's, like when I visit there now, like a few times I visited afterwards, it has this, it has this space in peace. Wow. Um, and the thing is that it's, it's not an isolation. It's not that we are doing this and providing this to them. It's like, yes, we actually do trick in, into choosing a few things that might not be, but that is not in exclusion of them and their bodies. It's always including who's actually going to, what is actually going to work. So, uh, so it's not an isolation and we're not saying that, oh, we are the ones who are actually providing them that space and we are the one, ones, holier ones, holier than thou that is going to create. Yeah, we're not trusting space. it on them. It's a, it's, it's, it's created it's, kind of, yeah, it's, I mean, at least for them, they think that they're creating it together, but. They, yeah. they, but there is, there is a bit of all of that. Yeah. Even if it's even if it's not verbally voiced, it's not in isolation. It's not either or. It's in it's from a space of. It is not possible actually. Like when I tap into all the projects that we are doing, I mean, there is a huge level of uh, connection to the people, to the site, to the land, and you know, as designers and architects and you know, furniture makers, each creation, you know, uh, I I want to talk a little bit about the process as well. So each creation is. Uh, you know, it's like you you put it together uh, somewhere in space first. So it's, I'm not even talking about 3D views or anything like that. But the creation starts getting created. And, you know, we start playing with the creation. And we start including the people. And the creation then, you know, kind of has a life of its own. And, and, I mean, it shows us where to go. And, and in the process of that, it's, and it's constantly fluid. You know, I mean, there's no perfect one frozen version of anything. So that's where the, 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 what Ina was talking about before, where the, you know, water wants to be. So the process that we do is that, you know, we are constantly sketching. We are constantly, you know, looking at different versions of the same thing. It's not like we create one plan and give it to the team, right? So we are constantly looking at various iterations of the same thing, you know, I mean, I, I mean does, is it falling into? It's a fluid, it's a constantly fluid sort of a process. And in that fluidity, you know, the water body is here, next minute the water body is here, then it's here, then it's here. And in that fluidity, you know, there's a sense of getting, there's a lightness in one of the versions. And which works with the demands that the clients have and what they don't want. And, you know, I mean, all of it put together. It's a process that no AI can do. It's a process that, you know, nothing can do. It, it can just be done with awareness. And I get creativity is, I mean, what we call creativity in this world is actually awareness of being able to tap into all that thing. I mean, one of, one of the professors used to call us conduits, uh, you know, so one of those drumble doors of the professors, that like you are conduits, you are not designers. So, you know, it would right. be like, yeah, it would be like that, you know, you have this entire set of information, you know, bylaws, you know, you have, you have, you require to know fire norms, you require to know all these various things which are part of the building industry, you know, which you've got to follow. And then you have the client and the client's requirements, what the client doesn't want. I mean, or with a cool school project, you require to think about what the administration wants to do. And so very interesting school project we did, we give them different the students with different staircases to bunk. And you know, so you have to constantly think that they're like when you create a story. You know, you don't have a hero and everybody or the heroine and everybody saying yes to it, right? You create this sort of a, you know. We basically create all this from the space of question. That's what you Yes, mean. yes. And being so, present. And being present, wow. So I would, I would really, really ask you that, I know uh, it's, we can keep going on <laughs> with this whole chat. It, uh, I just wanted to have a few tips for people who already are currently living in the houses whose architectures have already been done and they're not going to rebuild. What are your tips and uh, things for people to actually change that spaces for themselves and live in those spaces with total joy and ease and create more? And uh, if you can be happy to give the tips, what would be you think for them to be living in the house with total joy? What would be your individual tips, Adrish and Ina both? Ina, you go first. <laughs> okay. Um... One of the things is that like becoming present with what are the areas that you're avoiding? 
like what what is asking for your attention what does it require uh the moment you start giving it attention it's really interesting because you i'll be walking you know in in the room and suddenly i become aware of something and i i can then perceive that uh, something is required you know, that can change but so so it's it's sort of becoming present with uh what okay so i'll make it easier just ask what am i avoiding that i can actually give attention to um or what does it require um what's required here and so one when you start looking at that you start becoming aware of like you know it can be a simple thing of just setting a cushion straight like there are these uh, or a, like a flickering light that can be fixed cuz we don't realize how energy like what we such energetic beings that when we are shutting off in a we are aware of it but we are shutting it off and in that shutting it off we are making it bigger and a bigger problem but the moment we just look at it is just a bulb change or is just you know voltage check check or it's just something that can actually change that um, that space and that creates more ease and space for you and your body because that's your reality so it's it's it in our spaces and places will invite us to more of what's actually your true for you and your body and what is more nourishing and that's one of the things that surprisingly we discovered we thought it was about be recycled and reclaim and reuse but i think that's too small that i'm not going to cover it all so what is actually required is if something is nurturing for your body it's nurturing for the earth yeah wow thank you like if your body likes it if your body enjoys it it creates more for everyone like even if you're looking at like you know how you hug a body that's nurtured and taken care of it's a totally different experience yes and it's the same way with the house it's same way with your body it's same with the beings and it's same way with the with the places so it's the willingness to go okay what requires my attention and then giving it what it requires a lot of times we just becoming present with it and someone else will pick it up and change it you know it's a lot of times you don't even have to do it and the other is the like the, the taking the action of it rather like than what i was coming to you know so you know you just required to look at okay i'll start with this table let me move the table so you know the the the, the each object has got its i mean for the lack of any word i would say its own field or aura or whatever you know when you place five things together on your mantelpiece they create a certain something right there's an energy going on and then you move it around and there's it looks like something else right so similarly everything you know like a table a chair all of these objects actually are constantly speaking to us yeah giving some sort of an energy and you know and so one of the things that you do is you you screw around with it a little bit you take one table and move it and say, okay now what is is it doing something to the space so that's that's yeah. the space from where we do layouting sometimes you know it's so much fun you go to the, all the furniture is coming back you know and we were we were following the drawing and stuff like that and you know we laid it out and all that and you know client and us are standing there and looking at it like Suddenly, Ina will go no, and you know we'll move around it. But the layout was not like let's do the layout. Let's do this now and let's see how. So you yeah, know, yeah. such a fun play of stuff. I just, I, I once told a client, "Can you just leave the room for a second? I want to require to speak to this piece." I just wanted to. <laughs> I just wanted to add that thing because, like, if, if when you're willing to just show up with your with your awareness, so you you can be surprised with the things that you get because we showed. we done like two three layouts and this is this was like way back when we just started the earth home and we'd already done two three you know uh, a layout and nothing was getting approved with the joint family so we were dealing with like some three not the joint family we have a lot of joint families four four different families like we were dealing with four different families in their point of view and we were working on a common area and so we were looking at how can we change it and i was like and we kept trying it and they said no nah, not this not this i said like can you just give me a moment with everything and they said short and they all disappeared within 5 seconds i just looked at all the elements that were there like because there were some things that they wanted to keep from before there was something that they were looking at adding with some furniture pieces that we had designed that we were adding so it was a combination of it all so i just asked everything how would you like to be placed what's going to work what is going to be the greatest contribution and how can i play how can we place you in a way that allows each one of you to be the contribution that you are 
And I don't know, it's like Matrix. I see it moving like this and I see and they show like I get a download and everyone has a different capacity with this. I just get like, but if you can look at the energy, I get a download of what it's going to be like. And you can just ask for that awareness by not how of it. Yeah, but, it's really good with this, with, you know. But whatever that, whatever that she's being, you can ask for it. But I get a download of how it will be. And then I present it to them and it, it gets approved and done like this and things move faster. Yeah. So then everything moves faster. The furniture knows what his job is. The pieces know what his job is. They, things move like that. The wallpaper knows where it wants to be. So everything wow. starts. So, everything actually is a gift and has consciousness and is willing and desires to contribute to it only we ask yeah so it's the so yeah. i can i can ask for it so, so for us like a big thing for me and i know it's for audition as well is and the earth home, like on the whole is not really following trends not going by trends yeah, because it's not trends. Trends or we're not going yeah, to follow trends anti-trend. but it's about yeah, but it's not even anti-trends. It's including the trends, but it's going, yeah. hey, what's actually going to work? What's going to create that wealth and that prosperity that you that, that you and your body can actually have and receive? And then allowing that to show up in ways you can't even imagine. So so it's really, it, it's, and it's the willingness to receive the information from everything rather than like, you know, one of the paintings was hideous in terms of one of the, the, the younger generations, uh, younger generation, but the okay. way it, the way the painting, can you guys hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm saying don't tell. I, I do. You're saying what? That's the hideous painting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what some of the people's, the younger generation's point of view was. But the moment I asked, where would you like to be for you to be, the, you to be all that you can be, it showed me. And the moment we placed it there, everyone was so grateful to have that painting. Wow. Yeah. So guys, so, questions is the key. That is what you say is like, you know, we can go on and on, I guess. I <laughs> Everything is definitely um, questions and I'm grateful for- There are no answers. There's no answers and your awareness and follow and trust. And I guess everybody of you who's living in the houses, already current houses, what, what questions can you ask to change and have more ease and fun as what Ina and Adri say is that it's you. Number one step is you asking questions to start contributing to earth. And I think if we start change our point of view that yeah. as what Adri beautifully said, that first acknowledge that earth is our home rather than just our home home as home, but earth is our first home. Uh, we probably can change a lot on this planet. Yes, nevertheless, I don't want to end this, but I think we are short of time now, but definitely yet discussion for yet another time. Before you leave guys, would you like, like to quickly say me one light what or line what does be the change means to you guys what's the show what does that look like in your world so for me be the change is uh, creating what you uh, know you can create and going ahead and doing that nonetheless awesome. and for Ina, yeah and for, for me is uh, uh, never looking for the answer but always being the question that would allow you to be greater awesome Beautiful. Thank you. And would you like to, uh, we have already shared your uh, links on the ins, uh, on the chat here. Anything else you would like people to invite you to your spaces? Any yeah, we are called the Earth Home. T-H-E-A-R-T-H-H-O-M-E. Like the Earth is our home. So the Earth Home. So you can see our work online and we have an Instagram page. We have uh, a Facebook page. Uh, I'm Audrey Chakravarti. You can see here. This is Ina. So you can find us online and we have our numbers and stuff. I'm sure you'll find a way to meet us. Guys, if you're and yeah, homes, beautiful if, homes. If you like, have any question and if you would like, because we are really asking for our peeps to show up. Yeah. So if you get that we are your peeps and we can actually contribute in creating a different possibility with the planet, awesome. call us, Thank get you. in touch. Thanks. Even if you just have a question, call us. Be thank, you. thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Ina. Thank you, Aradna. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just thank you. And thank you, everybody, showing on for the talk show. And whosoever liked it, if you think you, your people around you would like it and want to know more around Earth, please share it with your friends, family, and wonder what contribution can that be. And thank you, my team, Sanali, Shivangi, and Mumesh, for all your help and support all the time. Thank you. And thank you. Looking forward to seeing you.
थैंक यू सो मच